Well, in this video, I decided to share some tips and tricks on how to better your mental health as a young man. These tips and these tricks are universal. They can work for anybody. We all have a brain that is always succumbed by the same things. And if we just break free from those chains and depart from some bad habits and implement some new activities and habits, we could drastically improve our mental health. These tips would have definitely helped me back in the day. And I wouldn't have fallen or succumbed to so many dark emotions or just loopful thoughts that are destructive and self-sabotaging that took away or wasted my time and now we're always going to be met with shortcomings we're going to go through dark seasons in our life and that's just unavoidable but if you follow these tips and tricks and you apply some of these things into your life you will become a little more immune or you will have the strength inside of your system to combat those seasons or to not crumble in those seasons because if you have a weak mind and you enter through a dark season well now your mind is even weaker and you will make that experience that much more difficult but if you go into one of those seasons primed and ready to go, you will probably flip it into a positive anyways and you will have the strength to carry on. This generation definitely has a mental health crisis and it's because misery loves company and we're all connected through our phones and also the system that we live in doesn't have our best interests in mind. Just look at the news, look at all the stuff that they promote. Obviously it doesn't put us first or have our best interests at heart. And spiritually we are suffering because we're connected or we're just not doing the proper things to take care of ourselves because we don't know what that may be. I'm not saying if you implement all of these things your life will just get better overnight like it does take time because we have been programmed a certain way and sometimes negative thoughts can be addictive to be a victim or to think a certain way where you're beating yourself down and obviously you don't want to be that way but your brain is kind of addicted to that negative loop and doing a full 180 can shock your system you're completely negative and then you're transferring over into a positive life or just altering your state of mind like it's not going to be easy so when you do implement these things in your life you're not going to see drastic changes but it's gonna be a slow incremental improvement that will compound over time to where you will be a man that you are proud of and now this is something that every single man and every single female should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis I don't care if you're 60 I don't care if you're 12 you should be going to the gym six days a week and if you haven't been to the gym in your life before it's gonna take discipline it's probably gonna be miserable but it's not always gonna be like that eventually that addiction that love that passion is gonna kick in and that will carry you for a long time and you're always gonna have down days but this is going to build your confidence. This is going to build your identity, your mental strength, your physical strength, and just the day-to-day -day improvement on your physical self will bring fulfillment. And when you're working out, it boosts your endorphins, it boosts your dopamine, which is going to boost your positivity after that workout. And eventually your energy levels will change because if you're always sitting on a couch, your body is not going to be producing energy for you. You're used to being lazy. So your body is like, well, I don't need to exert any more energy to do some hard tasks. So it simply won't. So you'll just be a depleted, vessel that can't get off its ass because your body is not conditioned to do that but when you start working out your body will start producing more energy that will transfer over into different activities in your day so when you're done working out you have all this energy you feel vibrant you feel good you feel confident you want to attack the day and that will translate into every other aspect conversations relationships your purpose all that energy can be dished out into different areas in your life which is going to bring you fulfillment and a lot of us including myself we have this approach of self self-improvement. I got to better myself. I got to become successful. So I'm going to work out. And that can a lot of the times just ruin your results or your motivation, or you just won't be as dedicated to go as long as you normally would if you were doing it from a passionate place. And that may sound strange, but the most ripped version of myself was when I was passionate about lifting weights, when I was having fun, when I was enjoying it, when I was listening to the music that I enjoyed having pre-workout, having a great time. And that's the approach you need to take. You need to do it because you enjoy doing it. And at first, you may not enjoy doing it, but I'm just saying over time, have fun with it. Don't box yourself in. When I started working out, I was trying to keep a positive mindset or just stay connected to God. So I'd always listen to worship music, which is not the greatest thing to work out with. And I would set a time limit. So I'd box myself into these constraints of I have to just work out for an hour or I'm looking forward to that hour so I could quit after that. And I wasn't making any progress because I felt confined. I felt like I was forcing myself to do something instead of breaking the chains, not setting a time limit. So I'm not boxing myself in and just working out and doing as much as I possibly could. If it was for 40 minutes, if it was for 20 minutes, if it was for an hour, then that's fine. That's good. I just did as much as I possibly could and eventually I was going over an hour because I didn't have that limitation set up. And I switched the worship music to something I actually enjoyed like some Z's music that hyped me up to have great workouts. So you have to approach these things in a passionate way. Don't do it to become successful. Don't do it to become your greatest version. Just do it because you want to do it and you love to do it and you enjoy 
enjoy the process. That's when you will make the most progress, get the most results, and become the greatest version of yourself. Now, number two is a proper diet because you need that energy feel inside of yourself. What you feed yourself is the energy that you are working with. If you're eating processed foods each and every single day, your body will be prioritized on breaking all those trash, unorganic, canned, processed foods inside of your system to where it's not going to be giving you energy. It's going to be working on digesting and breaking down those disgusting foods. And when you go for a workout, you will be exhausted. You'll be depleted. You won't feel good. It will be strenuous. You'll be sweating. Your armpits will be stinking like some processed, disgusting junk. You'll be burning out midday. And when you finally muster up the motivation and the discipline to do something that's going to benefit you in life, whether it's going for a run, working out, having long conversations, you will be depleted. You will be drained. Your body will not follow along. You're going to get brain fog from all these disgusting, cancerous, toxic foods. And your mind may be motivated, but your body just cannot keep up. And you're going to go back into that depressive slump and your body will just want to relax. It will give up on you. You need that energy feel. You need a proper diet that is clean, that is healthy. So you have that clean energy. So you have clarity in your thoughts. So you can go through a workout and feel energized. Because when you're working out, it will be so noticeable how bad your diet is because you'll be out of breath. You'll feel sluggish. You'll be lazy. You'll be slow. And you just won't feel optimal. You won't feel great. Number three is being adventurous and going on adventures. When we were children, we would just crack the door open and make up imaginary things inside of our heads and we would be playing with our friends going on bike rides and that's what you need to do inside of your life nowadays as an adult or as a young man you need adventure you need that natural dopamine that curiosity that unknown factor inside of your life whether it's going for a bike ride joining boxing going for a run going on a hike doing something that can take your mind off things or that can bring you relaxation whether it's going into nature going out for a nice walk something that can distract your mind or put it at ease because when we were kids we were constantly having fun going outside playing with monster trucks hitting jumps on our bmx's we were constantly experimenting or trying new things or going on adventures and that's what you need inside of your life number four socializing now a lot of us have turned to isolation or just rejecting new people into our lives because we had negative experiences certain people planted negative seeds or they said things that were harmful or hurtful or we had a great idea that brought us fulfillment and we wanted to share it and they shot it down or they judged you in a certain way you probably have a negative experience like the majority of us when it comes to socializing or being around groups of people. And don't be discouraged on making new friends because this happens to every person in society because there is a lot of losers. Misery loves company. Certain people just want to bring other people down so they can make them feel how they feel inside. And that's all they do. They make people miserable. They have nothing good to say and those people suck. They just suck and they're always going to suck and that's just the way it is. Those people exist. There's also great people who can support you, who will love you, who won't judge you. People who you can have a nice deep conversation with, express your emotions, and that's the group of people you need to surround yourself with. People who want to see you do good, who don't put a ceiling or a limitation on your life, who don't hate on you, who don't talk behind your back, who don't judge you. And that's why I love the church scene. I love the people there because they have morals, they have principles, and I like to be around them because I can be myself and they're very accepting. But just surround yourself with great people because isolating yourself and barricading yourself in your room will make you depressed. It is a guaranteed. In the Bible, it said man is not meant to be alone. And it's true. Every single time I have isolated myself or barricaded myself in my room or went down that road, I would always think about suicide. I would always be incredibly depressed or just self-sabotaging or I'd have these overbearing, destructive thoughts. A man is not meant to be alone. Communication and expressing your ideas is a skill. And if you isolate yourself, you're going to be feeling like a weirdo. You're going to come out into society. You're going to be quiet. You're going to feel awkward. You're going to feel weird. You're going to feel departed and set apart and it's not going to be a great feeling and this is why you need to surround yourself with great people i'm not telling you to be an extrovert and throw yourself into society because when you're extroverted people have a lot more to say they have more criticism they have more negativity it's just in their face and 90 percent of people in society are negative that's just the way it is they're negative people so you could be doing great you could be an extroverted person who's extremely charismatic who's doing everything right the only thing they can offer is something negative because that's the way they feel and they're just expressing how they feel inside. And that's not the way to go. Find a great group of people that you can trust, that you enjoy being around and who you can be yourself around. A good environment where you can express those deep internal thoughts. Because keeping those bottled up and suppressed inside of yourself and not having a group of friends that you can communicate that or talk about it with will make you overthink because you're not expressing how you feel inside. And it's just looping around inside of your mind constantly. And it's not being expressed. Number five is a sense of purpose. You need a reason.
reason why you are living on this earth, something that you can wake up and attack every single day. And this is where people, including myself, get purpose wrong. They think their purpose has to make them money. They think their purpose needs to make them successful. They look at their purpose through a nine to five lens to where, oh yeah, I really enjoy this. I love it. And I really enjoy the process of doing this, but it's not making me any money. So I'm going to put it to the side and I'm going to shove it away. And now they have no purpose and they're looking for their purpose, but their purpose doesn't make money. It doesn't make them successful. So they bail on it. And now they're just purposeless individuals who feel insignificant inside. They're always searching for that purpose or what is it? What was I meant to be? When you are seeking your purpose, guaranteed 80% of the time, it's not going to make you successful. It's not going to bring you income till down the line. The person who was in the NBA, they started off loving basketball. They're shooting hoops. They'd show up to the court every day, talk with their friends. They were having fun. They enjoyed it as a teenager. They grew up. They got really good because they loved it and they could stay connected to it. And they became more disciplined and they practiced even more because they loved it. And eventually they were in the NBA just making millions of dollars because that was their purpose. They loved to do it. And a lot of people, they enter their purpose with a nine to five lens of, oh, I'm not making money right away. Oh, I look like a loser. Oh, this is just not for me. Oh, it's not going to make me successful. I'm just going to do a Shopify store and do something that's not even aligned with your purpose. And then you make money from that. And then you're still looking for your purpose and you're feeling miserable. Just stick to who you truly are, even if it's not making you money. Like this is my purpose. It's not making me money. I only get nine views, but it's improving my communication skills. I feel more fulfilled. I'm expressing the ideas that I feel inside. So it's not bottled up and I feel I'm achieving something. I feel like I'm doing something in my day and I feel like the fullest version of me and it's doing so much more than just providing income. It's doing so much more than making me successful. It is actually making me successful in other areas of my life because I'm getting used to having long conversations and expressing my ideas, which that can translate into your job. That can translate into so many other places. Your purpose can make you successful in so many different avenues because you are leveling up that side of yourself. When it comes to literally anybody who has done amazing things in their life, they started off because they loved it. PewDiePie, he was working at a hot dog stand. He loved making videos, so he made videos. And the reason he was consistent with making videos is because he truly loved it. When you're jumping into YouTube or a hobby because you want to become successful or that's your targeted aim, that's the reason you're doing it, you will burn out and you will drain over time if you don't see that incremental improvement, if you don't see that money in your bank account, if you're not getting the success fast enough, you will bail and you will completely reject the idea and turn to something that's not your purpose because you had the wrong lens over your eyes. You were trying to become successful. You were trying to make money. And I understand in this society, that's what everybody wants. But when it comes to your purpose and fulfillment in your soul and your spirit, you have to switch the lens. You got to do it because you truly enjoy it because it's your purpose. It gives you passion. It makes you happy. It brings you fulfillment. It brings you enjoyment. And that's why you're doing it. That's the only reason. And people can catch on to that wave later down the road. But right now you're doing it because you love it. And 90% of people, they became successful because they were just doing their purpose. Like Mr. Beast, he started off loving YouTube. He was the most passionate guy. And the reason he can continue doing these huge scaled videos with tons and tons and tons and tons of effort continually without burning out, it's because it's his passion. He enjoys doing it. He's going through life just killing it. But it appears like he's not breaking a sweat and that's because it's his passion. He enjoys what he does. And that's what you need to do. Just enjoy what your purpose is. Not for the money, not for the success, not because you're going to get some females from it, because it brings fulfillment in your spirit, which makes you more positive, which in return will make you a more attractive person to outsiders looking in, which will bring you more opportunities anyways. The next one is a dopamine detox. The reason we get derailed in life or unmotivated or uninspired inside of our lives is because we give into a third party's opinion. We listen to somebody else and that's what we're doing constantly. No wonder this generation is so confused and directionless and they can't see what they need to be doing in their life. It's because your brain will come up with a game plan. Hey Landon, this is your spirit talk and this is what we should be doing. This is what I want you to do. And then you go and watch some videos. We got a Shopify store. This is what some kid is doing and he made like $8 million in one night. And this is what you should be doing as well because this kid is extremely successful and he's way younger than you and you're a complete loser. You're so much older than him and you should be doing this because it's making money. And now you're watching some motivational video of, okay, you got to do this. You got to wake up at 4 a.m. and now you're switching your routine to that. And then you're watching some huge YouTuber and you're getting pulled in this direction, getting pulled in that direction. But it's like, what do you truly want? You need a dopamine detox so you can have clarity on what you truly want. And there's so much BS on your phone. There's so many distractions. 
distractions on your phone. And I have a couple great settings on my phone just to make it less addicting and less appealing to where I don't even want to go on my phone because it's not fun at all. And it's a hassle just to navigate because of all the settings I implemented on my phone. I took off Face ID, so I have to type in an extremely long password that's very inconvenient. And every time I want to pick up my phone, I remember that I have to type in my password and I'll just put it down to the side. And I go to log into my phone and my background is very boring. It's on grayscale, so it just looks depressing. It looks boring. It's not addicting. It doesn't look appealing. It doesn't look fun at all. I don't want to be on my phone after a while because I look at it and I'm like, yeah, like this is trash. This is boring. I have all my notification badges turned off so I don't get pulled into any apps. I also have my downtime set up at 10, 16 p.m. to 6 a.m. So when it hits 10 p.m. all the way until the morning, I cannot access any of my app. I deleted YouTube Premium so I can't watch any videos outside of the app. And so I also have to watch the ads to make it more annoying to watch some videos. I also set up an app limit so I can only spend a certain amount of time on each and every single app. And after I added all these settings to my phone, my screen time has depleted so immensely. Like I rarely go on my phone because real life is funner than going on my phone now. And I'm not being distracted by clown YouTubers or things that just don't serve me any value. So now when I go on my phone, it's for a reason, whether it's listening to music in the gym or to watch valuable videos that serve a purpose because it's such a hassle to get to that point to where I need some sort of value. Now sometimes I watch some videos just to watch some videos, but once you start implementing all these other things, you want to watch successful people. You want to watch things of value because you're becoming more valuable. And now you're more interested in becoming a better person because that's the path you're on. And don't think I forgot about YouTube on my desktop. Every single YouTube thumbnail is blurred, so I'm not getting reeled in by some eye candy thumbnail that's going to reel me into some video that serves no value. I only see the title, so if it seems interesting or it seems like it adds value, then I'll click it. There's no dates. There's no views. I can't scroll down to see the comments. There's no suggested recommended videos on the side. There's really nothing besides the video in itself. So I'm not randomly scrolling down to the comments or watching more than I intended to watch in the first place. And there's no notification bell, so I can't see your guys' comments. Go to my YouTube studio. There's no comments. I wish I could just delete the subscriber count and the views and all of that because it changes your identity. It reels you into things that are unimportant. If I went to my YouTube studio and I realized I'm getting no views, I'm getting no subscribers, I would be deterred away from my purpose or unmotivated because I seen some analytics that didn't serve my ego. And if the analytics are really good, then it may just change who I am as a person. I may just appeal to my audience instead of myself because I see that a certain video is doing well. So this is very helpful. And the next one is getting proper sleep and having a consistent routine. And that's pretty obvious. Your body will be rested. You'll be energized in the morning. You will feel great. You won't be depleted or burning out halfway through the day. You will have an abundance of energy that will carry you through every single task throughout your day. You won't need random cups of coffee to carry you throughout the day. You'll just feel energized. You'll feel rested. You'll have clarity. You'll be thinking properly. And here's some extras that you can add to the mix. And it's just proper grooming, taking care of yourself, getting a haircut. I need a haircut. Wearing deodorant, wearing cologne, taking care of your body, shaving when you need to shave, truly caring about your appearance and taking care of yourself, wearing clothes that match your style, coming up with good outfits. And this will just build that self relationship to where you care about yourself and you care how you look. Not in a selfish way where it's all about me. I love myself. I'm a lover of thyself. Not that way. Just taking care of yourself so you respect yourself. And that will just make you want to take care of yourself in other ways when it comes to your diet, when it comes to proper sleep. And another one, just to stay on top of those thoughts and to program new thoughts, meditation, mindfulness, being the programmer of yourself. Because every person has a lot of intrusive thoughts. And sometimes when you're thinking negative, you could think a negative about thinking negative. And then it's just a vicious thought loop of negativity that you can't stop. Or maybe somebody has done you wrong or you had a bad relationship or something is just taking up rent inside of your head and you cannot forgive that person and you're constantly just wasting energy in your mind. You're thinking about things that do not serve you. Meditation, subconscious programming is a good way to reprogram your mind so you can think the way that you want to think, which is positive. So you can build new thought patterns inside of your mind because if you hear something on repeat continually, eventually you will pick up those beliefs and those ideologies to make them your own. Meditation is just a good way to put your mind at ease, to get over bottled up or unpleasing emotions that are destructive, that don't serve you well. It's just a good reset. It's a good way to rebuild your mind. Because just like your body needs work and effort to make incremental improvements on a day-to-day -day basis, so does your mind. You need to put some time aside just to pluck those weeds inside of your mind and to clean your thinking, to push it towards a more positive route because that's where you're going to find success. You're not going to find success in self-sabotaging yourself, being depressed, being sorry for yourself, being a victim, or being negative every 
single day. The only thing you're going to do is attract like-minded people who are going to make your situation and your mind even worse, where you're going to explode, or you're just going to push away the positive, successful, fulfilled people, and you will never see that in your life because they don't want to be around you. Because winners do not want to be around losers because they're a stumbling block. All they have is limitations, doubts, fears, insecurities, and the winner has already overcome those things, and he wants to move on and be surrounded by like-minded individuals. And a loser does not want to be around a winner because the winner makes the loser self-reflect. Think about all the things that he has failed at in life or what he hasn't done in his life to where the loser will A, compare himself or feel insecure, and the two just can't coexist in the same environment. It's going to be uncomfortable. One will get pushed out and one will move in the other area. So if you want to be a winner, if you want to be successful, if you want to be around the right people who will make you happy, who will make you positive, who will make you feel good about life, then become that person yourself. Take care of your mind. And the last one is having a connection with God and reading the Bible. Now, a connection with God is very important because if you don't have that connection, you will feel alone inside of this world. And if you're trying to do something that goes against the grain with society, you need something you can lean on, and that could be God. And the Bible will instill a lot of morals, a lot of principles where you will just feel good about yourself because you're becoming a good person. You're being kind to people and you're doing things properly and you will feel good about that. Because being a moralist dink who's just doing people wrong, talking behind their back, spreading rumors, doing every single person dirty that you can imagine, or just being a negative influence on everybody around you, you do not feel good about that. Deep down, you do not feel good about that. And the reason you're doing that is because you don't feel good about yourself. You're just projecting. The Bible gives you a lot of good morals. It shows you how to treat people. It shows you how to treat yourself. And it shows you how you should maneuver, how you should talk, how you should be, how you should present yourself. When you follow those guidelines and those rules, you feel good about yourself because you are a good person. You feel like you're doing the right thing. And it gives you that discipline that can translate into different areas of your life. And the connection with God is futile because man should not be alone. Like if you're just navigating through this life and you have nothing to lean on, if you can't lean on other people because they can't relate to you or they just can't see where you see from or the conversations that you want to talk about are a little too deep for anybody else, you can lean on God and you can pray to God and build that connection and you will never feel alone. You will always have something to lean on in the hard times and you'll be more of an optimist because you'll put your trust and your faith into God for the things that you cannot handle by yourself. Because sometimes you just need a supernatural hand to guide you. But anyways, that sums up my list of things that have drastically improved my mental health or made me more positive or happy or confident about myself or instilled more self-belief or self-worth or made me more valuable in life. This list has definitely aided in that process. And all you got to do is just take it serious and take those steps to move in that direction and apply these things in your life and you will feel a lot better about yourself in every aspect. But that concludes this video. I appreciate you guys for watching and peace out.